Hey y'all, it's Crystal. So thanks for coming by today. Um, we're just gonna kick off a new little reading vlog because basically it's September. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, so gonna be a little theme this week really uh, bec uh, because of the Carnival Readathon. Uh, so the Carnival Readathon is hosted by Kelsey from Slime and Slashers and this is for her patrons. And um, so I definitely um, support support uh kelsey over on her patreon really just because of this she does really fun stuff for us like these you know patreon readathons and stuff like that she just loves the theme and i do too <laughs> and so for this theme it's like carnival circuses amusement parks clowns all that kind of fun stuff and um so she's got a bunch of fun prompts for us to uh, she'll make us like a map of like a, a park with like different like rides and things like that and then she's got like a big top circus for us where two we can win little um not win but earn little uh <laughs> you know things that'll be at a circus so that makes sense <laughs> anyway so for this week i'm diving right into the circus carnival theme you know what i'm saying um so I'm gonna be reading you know, carnival, circus, clown type books and I'm really excited. <laughs> so I have made a start on a couple of things. So I just wanna go ahead and, and, yeah, and start it off. So I did start Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen yesterday at work. Today is Saturday the 2nd, so yesterday was the first, so I kicked it off. And I got about maybe like 60% or so on the audiobook, made pretty good progress at work yesterday. And I'm really liking this one so far. This is more of a sort of historical, kind of historical book. Um, and it's this man uh, named Jacob who was telling his story about his time that he worked for a circus. And so it, in, uh, I don't know if you've ever like read or watched the, the movie for the Green Mile. It reminds me of that in the way that it's told. There's an elderly man who's like looking back and telling his story. And so we get, you know, it's a dual timeline. We see him in sort of this present day setting of he's in, you know, like a nursing home situation. And, um, and he's, he's just remembering back to this time and what has triggered this is because a circus has come to town and a lot of the like residents of the nursing home are going to the circus and that kind of thing. So I think that has like triggered this memory of his time back in the circus in his like early 20s. And, and so how he ends up in the circus is right at the beginning of the book, like both of his parents die in an awful car crash. And uh, even though he was in college and really about to graduate with a veterinary uh, degree, uh, to be a veterinarian, he was going to join his dad's veterinary practice and everything. Oh, it was sad. Uh, so he's a really, you know, smart guy and everything, but he's lost after this. And so he leaves school and he jumps on a train and doesn't realize that it's the circus train. And so he just gets caught up, caught up in the circus and starts working there. And, and uh, they realize, you know, the truth comes out that he, you know, actually knows a lot about animals. And so he ends up working for uh, what they call the menagerie of the circus, you know, all of the animals. They got horses and uh, there's a giraffe, there's an orangutan, there's all kinds of stuff. They get an elephant, a part part right through the book. There's all kinds of animals going on. There's like lions and I mean, there's, they got quite a lot of animals on this circus. Um, and basically, he, he, you know, there's a, a female character named, what was it, Marlena? It's not Marlena. I can't remember it right now, but anyway. Uh, she is someone who work, who does a show. She's one of the performers of the circus, and she uh, does this show with horses, where she does you know tricks with the horses and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but she's also um, involved with this man who uh, who's a real son of a bitch, actually. Um, but I, I think there were going to be some sparks flying with uh, with these two. I'm not sure. Uh, but what has pulled me right into the story was at the very beginning. Um, something awful has happened at the circus at a future point and someone has, is dead and uh, so we're working our way up to this point and uh, so I'm definitely interested I, I, I'm really enjoying this a lot and, um, and yeah, I, 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 I want to see what, what's going on and what happened at this circus and I'm just I'm really liking this character of Jake he's kind of a young you know, naive guy so he's learning a lot <laughs> you know, by working for the circus so he's 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 having some fun. Um, I've got two short story collections that I'm just gonna kind of start and work my way through. Uh, the first of which is Dead Man Humor, 13 Fears of a Clown. Look at this awesome cover. 
So this is edited by Dave Higgins. So I actually picked this up last year um, at a book festival I went to. And um, I'm excited. So what I like about this though, is that it kind of like twists that sort of scary clown thing on its head. Um, so right here on the back, modern tales are filled with clowns who invoke fear, not laughter. Painted grins covering fanged maws. Baggy costumes concealing unspeakable horrors. Malevolent parodies of nature. But the tools of a clown work for good as well as ill. Only a trickster could tweak a monster's nose. Make up his war paint for the modern age. The devil cannot tempt a happy soul. What if instead of being the demons of urban legend, clowns were the victims or the heroes of the story? So basically it's asking like, clowns are not the scary part of this book. It's like, what make, what are clowns scared of? Yeah, so I read the first story, um, which was The Living Dark by R.M. Is that Mesia? And, and it was good. So if we got this clown who's hired for a birthday party, that, and that's his, that's his job. He, he works the birthday party, Sarka, the party Sarka, you know? <laughs> and so he's like, cool, you know, it's fine. Cool beans. I'm going to head up there. And then he realizes the house is just up the road a little bit. So he sets off walking and he hears some things in the woods. And there's this period where he sees like creepy yellow eyes in the forest. And he's like, well, WTF. <sighs> but then he makes it to the house and he gets there. He's not the only clown there. Dun, dun, dun. And it's a birthday party, but there's no kids there either. Yeah. So, yeah, something happens when he gets there. And it was it was pretty good. I really uh, so I'm really interested to see kind of how the authors interpreted this like, well, you know, what if what are what, you know, what are the clowns actually scared of, you know, instead of being you know, the ones that are scary to everyone else. So, so yeah. I'm interested in that so far, having a good time with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm also uh, reading Welcome to the Fun House. And um, this is a carnival horror anthology. And um, the first story, I'm not going to remember. I've got this one on my Kindle, so I, I didn't write it down yet. I'll try to put it here. Um, it, this one was good. And I feel like it was possibly like a, a long poem, the way it was kind of structured. Um, so with this little girl and her mom go to the carnival, she immediately gets lost and she's like, you know, tr just seeing scary things as she's getting lost. She gets like lost in like the house of mirrors and stuff like that. Yeah, it was pretty spooky actually. So it was pretty good. So man, a good start to this one too. I like to see uh, what other kind of carnival horrors we can get into next. So that's gonna be fun. And then last night, uh, Kelsey had us some sprints to kick off the readathon. I did start Tom Ficarelli's A Lower Deep. Uh, I think I'm just in a kind of old school horror mood. <laughs> so I wanna check this one out. Now this was, in, this was written in 2001. Um, so yeah, and it's just got this creepy, this creepy kind of old school, mimey harlequin clown on the cover <laughs> um look at his face oh my god <laughs> so this one is actually pretty interesting so far i'm up to page 80 um that you know the progress i made last night and um yeah it's pretty good actually so far our main character is a necromancer and he has like this kind of like familiar kind of thing that's called self like this little creature creature thing i don't know it's kind of interesting so far and it opens up and um he um he's at this restaurant and he follows somebody back home to try to sell him because again he's a necromancer but at the heart of it it says he's being pulled back home i don't I love when a character is like has to go back home you know and uh, so he's being pulled back home to his sort of old coven which we find out was just like just imploded on itself and his girlfriend at the time died and didn't survive so he's being pulled in because he is uh, what they call a summoner too um, so he's being pulled back in because he's a summoner which I'm, I'm guessing is a rare thing to be um, by you know this new coven that's being formed by some of the old people that he doesn't really want anything to do with because he thinks they're assholes because his girlfriend got murdered or got you know is dead so 
but he, he goes back to kind of see, you know, what's this guy wanting and under the promise that they can bring his girlfriend, you know, back from the dead. So I'm very curious to see where it goes. I mean, I'm, I pulled in, I'm interested and I don't think it's going to take me very long because the writing in the, can you see like the actual lettering here is huge. <laughs> Almost feels like it's the, uh, the large, the large print, <laughs> you know, when you get a large print book, that's because it's, yeah, I mean, up to chapter four, and I'm already, like I said, on page 80. <laughs> so it doesn't take real long to get through. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, yeah, so this is uh, kicking off, kicking off the, vlo the vlog. Um, I got a couple of other circusy, uh, you know, carnival things um, to get to also. Um, I'll take you along for the ride as we go. We're actually going to be leaving today to go camping for the night. Really excited. We haven't camped in years. And so it's going to be a nice, actually cool weekend here in North Carolina. So we were like, you know what? let's let's try to go camping so we're gonna go camping for the night up in virginia actually because we waited so long to try to find a tent spot that um a lot of the state parks and stuff were were full up so we got one spot <laughs> we found one spot at uh fairy stone state park so that's where we're gonna head out um, um other than that yeah i'm just gonna take my little books with me to you know when we go camping tonight we're just gonna take it easy yeah i'm just gonna have a uh, relaxing weekend it's labor day weekend here so um yeah we're just gonna get some relaxing in i think um that's it yeah so uh yeah let's let's start the show all right <laughs> bye and here it comes <laughs> Jim Rose. <laughs> so if you were anywhere in the 90s <laughs> um, and were familiar with Jim Rose Circus Sideshow, he would travel around with, with, little, with a little sideshow kind of show. And um, I saw him several times back in the 90s. And. Um, it was always a lot of fun. <laughs> I remember this episode. And I was like, oh, it's Jim Rose. <laughs> and the ending was in it. Yeah. It's a fun episode. I can't wait for the wake. <laughs> the There's the enigma. <laughs> I definitely saw him a couple of times on the Zim at the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those kind of sillier episodes of X-Files which I always liked <laughs> hey Rainy welcome to my museum may I put to rest any questions you may have conjured I was just reading about the fascinating life of Chang and Aang and uh, wondering if their death was just as fascinating. Okay, so I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the X-Files episode that I watched last night. Uh, I watched the episode Humbug. Uh, this is from season two. And um, I wanted to watch it. Well, one of the prompts for the readathon is to watch a movie or a TV show that, you know, figure, features like a circus or clowns or a carnival, something like that. And um, I remembered this episode. Take a no, it's a bit dry. I remembered this episode. Um, and I haven't watched it in, probably since it aired, to be honest. <laughs> Is, is yeah, like I said, it's Humbug from season two, and what it is is um, uh, Scully and Mulder going to investigate some murderers, and when they get there, um, it's a little community of sort of retired, you know, circus performers, uh, you know, sort of freak show acts, um, you know, people like that. So you see in the background, you see there's like a bearded lady and all that kind of stuff. So at the beginning, yeah, Reptile Man has been murdered. And, um, and yeah, so the story just goes from there, like who's killing everybody, right? 
and it's a really fun episode. It's it's one of the more lighter episodes. I really liked when they did like the kind of fun light episodes. They were always fun to watch, like the cops episode. Remember that one? That one was really fun too. Uh, so it's definitely on the lighter side. But excuse me, I'm so sorry. I don't usually <laughs> drink on the camera, but I'm just really mouse dry. Anyway, why I wanted to, to watch it because I remembered that Jim Rose was in this episode and uh, and the Enigma also from the Jim Rose Circus Size Show, which was a big freaking deal in like the 90s. If you were like a 90s kid, you know, teen in your 20s or so, and you were at all in these sort of music scene with like the grunge rock metal music scene um you probably knew about Jim Rose Circus Sideshow and I saw them gosh three or four times I think um they would they would tour with music acts I remember seeing them with Godsmack one time I think I saw them maybe at a Lollapalooza and maybe with like I think I saw them maybe three times maybe like Marilyn Manson or something Anyway, I definitely saw them a few times, and uh, the, actually the last time I saw them was with that Godsmack show, and it was actually their farewell kind of tour, and what Jim Rose was, was he brought, you know, people that did like sort of more old school like sideshow acts, and he, he you know, made them really cool and kind of edgy, right? Um, anyway, it was always just a lot of fun. Actually, I'm going to look on YouTube, actually, to see if I can find, like, a if someone, like, recorded an old, you know, show of Jim Rose. I'm going to look and see if I can find one and watch that, too. Um, but what I wanted to show is I actually bought his book um, at that farewell tour. So this would have been late 90s. Probably late 90s, I'm going to guess. Mm. My sister and I went to the show, I remember. Uh, but, I, you know, he, yeah, just... He had this little book that, and it, what it is, is, is he tells you how to do all these kinds of acts. So if you want to like nail, you know, put a nail into your nose, he tells you how to do it, all that kind of stuff. But he also says like, don't actually do it because, <laughs> you know, he's a professional, you know. So, uh, but anyway, I just kind of wanted to show the book because just a little kind of simple book that he you know, kind of put together. But, so it's called Angles. Uh, what I've seen now is it, so this was copyright 99. So I'm guessing, yeah, I go. Yeah, I said like late nineties, yeah. Um uh when I see now this is a three thousand print limited edition. Wow, that's cool. I'm really fun to have this. Um so so yeah, it's really cool. Um yeah, just really cool. I did uh Jim Rose signed it here. It looks like Bushwhacker signed it there. So Bushwhacker was a guy who did stuff. He would like put a wall um he would hold a lawnmower up by his chin and they would like throw like cabbage and stuff on it. I remember that. Um and I don't I don't remember this character this person. Is it Amagi? Oh, I don't know. Um I think this is Jim's signature there. Anyway. So <laughs> try not to get too long here, but but um but yeah. So like here, disclaimer. <laughs> The contents in this book are dangerous. Misuse of the material can cheapen an art form or at the very least make you look stupid. More important, misuse of this information may result in jail time or death. Do not attempt any of these tricks without the direct supervision of a responsible professional. So yeah, he's like, I'm covering my <laughs> I'm covering my ass right here. Um, yeah, so he's got something like entertaining animals, <laughs> a bear on a bicycle. Uh, devices and slights for deception, um, the geek act, like what is a geek, you know, um, wooden match mysteries, just all kinds of stuff, like card deck tricks, um, how to do like memory things, uh, some Houdini tricks. Um, yeah, I just, I just, yeah, how to pierce your tongue. Um, yeah, they would do that on stage. There was a guy who had like this, pier his nipples were pierced, you know, and he would like hang like cement blocks and shit from it. Yeah, I remember these. <laughs> I like now having like these memories of what all I saw at the Jim Rose Circus I showed. The guy that would eat light bulbs and shit. Yeah, it was always just a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so like I said, this just goes through like all the like, basically all the tricks of the trade, you know, sword swallowing, all kinds of fun. It's just, it's just a, 
it was just a fun book so maybe I'll dig into it a little bit and <laughs> uh, during this circus time and see but I'm really I'm happy to have this it's kind of beat up and battered now but from <laughs> you know well, a long time I've had this book now uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, I get this book and and, and Jim Rose Circus Sideshow. So if I do find something on YouTube, I'll link it below so uh, you can check it out because uh, I just remember having a lot of fun at the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow. And if you want to watch that Humbug episode, I think x is streaming on, I watch it on Amazon. Freebie now, they call it, you know. Uh, and I'm sure you can probably watch it somewhere else. But anyway, just wanted to say that. Bye! <laughs>
Yeah, so it does actually feature, feature this like Harlequin type old clown. <laughs> Exciting. I read another story in The Dead Man's Humor, 13 Fears of a Clown. And I'm um, still enjoying that one, so I'm gonna. So that's my reading for over the weekend. <laughs> so, of course, um, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read some more tonight. Tomorrow is. I'm off for work for Labor Day, but of course. Because we went on our trip, I gotta do things like laundry and groceries and that kind of fun stuff. But I'm probably gonna also just relax and do a lot of reading too. I'd like to get this book finished. I don't know if <laughs> I can finish it tonight, tomorrow. But anyway, that's it. So I'll check in when I got something to check in with. Shall we do a check-in? Today's Tuesday, September 5th, 5th? yes, <laughs> and um, I did finish Water for Elephants today. I finished up the audiobook at, while I was at work, and um, I really liked this. I liked this a lot. I really did. It's, um, I'd say it's more of a uh, sort of historical fiction type of story, and um, yeah, about this man telling about his time working in the circus during like the Great Depression era and you know how he ended up working there and everything. I think I, you know, kind of mentioned before, you know, about he's this young college kid and his parents, you know, died right in the beginning of the book. And so he hops on a train and ends up getting a circus train and he just gets involved in the circus and, and all that good stuff. There's a little romance in here. Um, there's circus stuff, you know, <laughs> um, and you know, we learn about, uh, you know, and through a few of the characters, we get, you know, wrapped up into some of the acts, but particularly the animal acts because our young man is, is a veterinary, veterinary, veterinary student. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, so, um, there, like I said, the sort of love interest in here is a woman that, uh, does like a horse show and then they, they pick up an elephant and she gets involved in, in an elephant show, all that good stuff. And like I said, there's sort of a dual timeline. He's an elderly man. He's like in his nineties, he's at a nursing home and he's telling his story because the circus has, has come, you know, to town. And I think that has triggered some memories for and yeah, um, so if you like that kind of story, almost, you know, a bit of slice of life, though this life, slice of life is a, is a different one because it is a circus, um, you know, just someone telling their story of, of, you know, some years of their life and everything. I think you would like this. Um, the romance is not heavier at all or anything. It really, I wouldn't even say it's just necessarily the main focus of the book, um, but it, you know, it just it definitely adds to the story um, because there's a little bit of conflict there, a little bit of drama, and um, and yeah, I was just really happy to have finally read this book. I've had this book on my shelf for so long; it's crazy town. And um, and yeah, so this book came out. It's been out for a little while now. I know 2006. So yeah, definitely been out for a while. Like I said, I think this was made into a movie. And um, I'm kind of interested now in the movie and kind of see how they um, how they interpreted this, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy to have read this, and I did really enjoy it. So yeah, if you like historical fiction type settings with, you know, with this this sort of or historical fiction stories with this slightly odd setting of it being in a circus, and and then just sort of you, you know just story about people in their lives, you know, I think you would like this. I, I really did enjoy it. And um, yeah, so that's great. Um, and because I just had a not too long left of the audiobook, um, I did go ahead and start the audio for Joyland by Stephen King. And we have another carnival setting. And um, I really made a good uh, chunk of um, progress actually in this today on audio. And the audio for this is great. And um, I was really surprised about it that my Libby had it. Um, available now because you know a lot of a lot of times you're waiting in line for Stephen King books when it comes to Libby you know anyway so 
Anyway, what is this one about? So yeah, this one is set in the 1970s. And we're following, well, kind of a, similar. We're following a young college kid. He's like, and goes to work for this place called Joyland at the coast of North Carolina, of all places, which is, of course, is where mm -hmm. I, I live in North Carolina. So when I saw that it was set in North Carolina, I was like, oh, cool. Um, I don't know that it says North Carolina on the back anywhere. La la la. No, it just mm -hmm. says job at Joyland. So yeah, I didn't, I don't think I knew this was actually mm -hmm. set in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. So that's cool. Um, and yeah, so he's kind of like working the summer between, you know, semesters and that kind of good thing. And, and, um, and is this Joyland? Is this, it's this big kind of carnival place, really. And it's got, you know, rides and games and all kinds of stuff. And um, it also is sort of slice of life, I guess, too, as we're following this young man as he's, you know, learning the ropes and learning the lingo of the carny life, you know, of the of the of working there and and um, meeting pe meeting new people, all that kind of good stuff, and and um, and yeah. So, but um, this uh, I guess this hist there's a history with this carnival with the sort of horror ride, the little. Funhouse horror ride, you know, um, that there's a ghost that people see there, and perhaps, uh, you know, someone, and someone, you know, a woman was murdered, and her ghost, you know, is maybe hanging around the horror house, and um, anyway, but there's other things going on. It's mostly, um, mostly just kind of character horror here. I think kind of classic in a classic state, Stephen King way, um, just getting some really good characters. And I do like this young man who. Um, who's working at the, at the carnival. Uh, really, I like him a lot. He's good. You know, he's a bit naive. Um, so he's, he's learning some things, you know, so I like it. I like that one a lot. So I have to finish that tomorrow at work. Um, I mean, I've, yeah, I don't have much, I don't have much left for that. Okay, so lower deep, I am, oh, you guys, I am close. I'm really close to finishing. <laughs> um, still a good little chunk though. So again, I'm not quite sure if I'll finish it today. Um, I sure would like to, I don't know, but. Um, so I'm just making my way through it still. I'll report back when I'm finished with that. Mm -hmm. I did read some more stories. I did read another story today in the Welcome to the Fun House. Uh, anthology and I really liked this story um, that I read today. I forgot the name of it, but it was this, oh, I don't know how to explain it really. <laughs> this young boy is like running through the woods being chased by something and he stumbles upon this carnival, of course, but it's a dark, sinister mm -hmm. carnival, carnival and he gets a little bit more than he has bargained for. Yeah, so it was pretty spooky actually. Um, what else? What else? I don't think anything else, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so I will update when I, um, probably tomorrow, um, uh, after I finish Joyland. And maybe we'll finish Lower Deep tonight. Uh, I'm gonna try a on it. <laughs> maybe I'll stay up late and read it. Um, but I'm done. Yeah, so that's about it. I'm getting back into the work week, you know, because we were off Monday for the holiday. So Tuesday's like, you know, like a Monday, Tuesday. You know how that is. And yeah, so that's it. I will check in later. <laughs> and dangerous. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Rose! Hello, Seattle. We've been gone a long time. It's good to be back in our home. Putting the insects in his mouth. You should have no problems touching them. Feed him! And a forced smile with a bend over. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Mr. Lifto! Alrighty, hey y'all. 
sun's beating down the door out there. To, so just a quick check-in. I did finish Joyland today, and I really liked this. I really did. I was thinking I was going to. I've heard mostly, you know, pretty positive things about this one. So I had, I did have some high hopes, you know. <laughs> Even though King can just be really hit or miss for me. Yeah, this one, this one was a hit. I did like it. And um, I think I talked a little bit about what it was about already. This, you know, kind of young kid spending mm -hmm. his summer at Joyland working at a, this amusement park or um, this kind of carnival type place and it kind of gets it's just you know kind of slice of life uh, getting to know him getting to know other people that work in the carnival he meets some other folks that live in the local area that takes place in North Carolina on the coast in the 1970s so of course I like the North Carolina reference um, it mentions you know like Lumberton and um, Oh, Myrtle Beach. It mentioned Myrtle Beach. Of course, it's South Carolina, but still. Um, anyway, so, uh, so yeah, and then we have this, this sort of murder mystery about um, there's, you know, some girls that uh, had had been murdered kind of pre, you know, previously. And that perhaps the horror house is haunted. I think I, I think I talked about all that. So, um, and so, yeah, um, I really liked, I really liked this character. I really like the main character here of this young man and, um, What's his name? Devin. Devin, yeah. And uh, I just, I liked him a lot. He, uh, he was just like a good guy, you know. And uh, um, the mystery part of it, I liked. And the, the ending, when we figure out who it was, yeah, I liked all that. I liked, I really liked the ending part. Uh, there's some sadness in here. And I, you know, maybe shed a little tear. And um, yeah, I liked this one a lot. I really did. Um, really liked, I just liked it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Really liked that one, and then I also listened to the audiobook for Clowns vs. Spi Spiders. I really had a good time with this. <laughs> this is just pure, plain fun, just like everyone had said it, it says it is. Yeah, it really is. It's just a ton of fun, and I mean, it kind of tells you what it is right there, it tells you what it's all about in the title. Uh, but it's so cool because it really twists that trope of like spooky clowns and it's scary clowns. You have this little troop of clowns. And so I can remember their names. Guffaw, um, Wagon, was it Wagon? Uh, Jaunty, Bluehead, who's the other one? Oh, I was going to remember them all now, I've forgotten. The other guy, Reginald, Reginald. Oh, I liked Reginald. <laughs> um, so they're clowns who are like nice clowns, right? <laughs> They've made a life out of being clowns. like. Rodeo clowns, birthday clowns, all sorts of clowns. They love being clowns. They don't like this like stereotype of like spooky clowns. They are happy. They bring joy to people. They are nice people, right? <laughs> um, but you know, the world has changed and a lot of people think clowns are spooky and scary. And so, you know, they're kind of looking for new work and they get hired on at this kind of like haunted house attraction uh, in Virginia and, um, to, but they have to play, you know, scary, spooky clowns. It really goes against like the grain of the, the you know, like they are anti-spooky clowns because they are not spooky people. And, but you know, you, you gotta work, you gotta get a gig. Like they said, I don't really wanna go work retail right now. You know what I mean? And they're kind of middle-aged by now. They've been doing this gig's gig for years and years, you know? And so they go work for the scary place. Meanwhile, <laughs> some spiders have been some really large spiders have been unearthed from a cave and start attacking the local area and that's where the spiders come in and yeah it's clowns versus spiders and it's just a hell of a lot of fun i'm telling you you just want a fun book with some really fun characters i really liked all these clown characters um I, you gotta give it a go you really do it's a ton of fun so i just i really enjoyed the heck out of that one um so yeah so let's see, today's the 6th, so to the 7th is when I'm planning on ending this vlog. So I've got one more day. What am I gonna read now? I don't know. I gotta finish my short story collections. I did read two stories today from Welcome to the Fun House. Uh, the one of those stories was amazing. I'm really liking that collection. So I think I'm just gonna dig into these short story collections to kind of ease out the week. And then I've picked out a, actually a couple of uh, extra things too that I think I'm going to get into and I am listening to the audiobook for Circus Mirandas. I'm about oh about half a way through that as well so I'm just reading the heck out of stuff this week and I'm loving it. So I will check in later okay. Bye. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> 
Hey y'all, I'm gonna do a final check-in for this vlog because today is the seventh, which means I've done a full week of reading circus, you know, clown, colonel, themed books. <laughs> and I've had a, a heck of a good time. Um, so let's wrap up the last few things I read because I read a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> so I think um, the last thing I mentioned was Joyland, finishing Joyland and Clowns vs. Spiders, I think, right? Yeah. So let's pick up with what I read since then. I read a really short story that I found on Scribd, and this is Clown Smut, you guys. It's called The Big Top Bukaki Party by Roxy Fontaine, and you know what? It was a whole hell of a lot of fun. So we've got these <laughs> three like college college girls. They're trying to, they're gonna go to Vegas, but they kind of make a detour and they go to this place in which all of your fantasies can be made true. Mm. And there's some clown sex involved. You know what? It was pretty saucy, pretty fun. So I had a good time with that one. <laughs> I then, uh, I thought, why not just move into some children's picture books from that one? Because that seemed like a really good segue. Um, so I read <laughs> Starkest Day in Japan by Eleanor Coer. I can't read my own writing. I think that says Coer. <laughs> and this is a really cute little story, actually. Um following this little, you know, little, um, two siblings and they're really excited for the, cause the circus is coming to town. The little boy's really excited cause he's really wanting to see an elephant. And then the girl gets there and she gets really enthralled with the tightrope walker. The illustrations were really sweet. And, you know, I think it's just, you know, cause it proves the fact that, you know, really everyone likes the circus, even, you know, no matter where you're from, what country you live in, uh, the circus always has just this magical quality to it, right? So that was really sweet. Um, I read Olivia Saves the Circus, which I mean, if you have all, I have kids books, you know, Olivia has a big series of this, of the books with this pig, you know, and, uh, these, this is by Ian Falconer. Um, I've not read this Olivia book. So Olivia is kind of precocious, but, um, and this one, she's like going the first, I don't know if it's like the first day back of school from the summer and, and they're kind of like, what'd you do this summer kind of thing? And she says, I saved the circus because, but she's really just telling this whole big story about how she had to, you know, do all the circus tricks because something happened with a real performer that I don't remember now. Um, <laughs> And it was straight. I liked the illustrations of her at the circus. Like, there's just one image of her, like, as a tattooed lady, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. Um, but she's obviously lying. And, like, when her teacher's like, are you sure this is true? She's like, yeah. You know, like, she doesn't deny that she's lying. I don't know. Telling your kids to lie, like, it's okay. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, there was a Red Claude at the Circus by Alex T. Smith. This one, a little dog goes to the circus. It's adorable. And his name's Claude. <laughs> yeah, a gem of a book. And then I read Zish, I don't know how you pronounce that, Zish, The Strong Man by Robert Rubenstein. And that's exactly what it was. It's about a, a classic old school kind of strong man guy that works for this circus and how he got in the business. It was a lot of fun too. I really liked the artwork of this one, um, the sort of painterly style. It was really, it was a lot of fun, I thought too. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> those are some picture books I read. And then I picked up Circus Mirandis. I finished this one out on audio. This is by Cassie Beasley. I really liked this. This was really charming, really sweet. Um, yeah, I just, I really liked this. So I think I mentioned a little bit about what it was about. Maybe I can't remember now, but we've got a, you know, a, young, a young boy who lives with his uh, grandfather. His parents had you know, passed away. And so he's raised by his grandfather and his grandfather's really sick and dying really. And so his aunt Gertrude's kind of helping out, but she's like really mean, of course, but he grew up with his grandfather telling him stories of circus Mirandas. And, um, there's a, a character at the circus named the light bender and he owes the grandfather a miracle. And, um, so the little kid, uh, is trying to kind of cash in that miracle to save his grandfather. It kind of goes from there, you know, about finding this like magical circus. Cause of course it's not just a regular old circus. And, um, it's, it's, it was just really lovely. Of course, um, just a lot about family, found family, um, love, friendship, yeah, it was really wonderful, a lot of, and a lot of just kind of magic in between. One thing I did not realize, because I hadn't really opened it up all the way, was this book. I noticed it had like, what, it's like a little step back kind of cover. You see that where the hat is? I'm sorry, I'm gonna do this one-handed, but I, 
I had never taken a dust jacket off. Oh my God, the dust jacket off of this book. Oh, look at this gorgeous book. Isn't that beautiful? And Leah, like, these are characters from the book. Their parrot's like a messenger for the light bender. And that's the, like, the bird lady. And then there's the guardian of the circus who's like this, this tiger. Yeah. Um, it was, it's a really lovely story um, for a middle grade story. If you like middle grade books, it's good. It says, has, you know, that touch of magic. But again, just the, the real, you know, love of family and stuff was good. Okay, I picked up a Goosebumps book. I got one of the Goosebumps Most Wanted books. Uh, this is a Corporate Earl sign. This is A Nightmare on Clown Street. And yeah, clowns. So this one, we follow this kid named Roy. So he goes to stay with his uncle for, I think the summer is what they're planning. And it's a cloak. It's a, the, it looks like a Coco's Clown Academy where, like I said, his uncle um, his works and this is a sort of a circus that's made up totally of clowns. So it's like it's clowns, clowns only. Now his uncle is called Murder the Clown because he kills with jokes. I know it's really weird. The ringmaster of this <laughs> circus is called Mr. Ha Ha Face. Very strange, anyway. But basically, we figure out like the, um, something something is menacing about this circus, and um, uh, people. And if you, you know, the clown steps out of line, and they get sent down to Clown Street. And this like dunk a clown booth, which is like menacing. So, uh, so the kids like trying to figure out what's going on. The story goes from there, but it's a goosebump book. You kind of know what you're gonna get. They're just plain fun, and this one was fun, and it had the added elements of like having a bunch of clowns in it. <laughs> so that was fun. And then let's finish off with completed books with Cirque du Freak by Darren Shan. I've actually never read this series or any books of this series. I know there's several now, and um, you know what? This sounds like a lot of fun, and I needed I need a little audio book to kind of com complete my day at work. And so I pulled it up. You can listen to it on Audible if you have Audible and you don't have to burn a credit. I always like to find stuff there for that. And um, and yeah, this was fun. So we're following sort of this group of group of boys who find this flyer for the Cirque du Freak coming to town. And they're of course they're in, you're like, mm, what's this? This seems interesting. And of course, like some of the grown-ups around them are like, oh, freak shows are awful. They just were, you know took advantage of those poor people back in the day. They, they've been outlawed. You shouldn't go to this freak show, which of course means the boys, like they only want to see it even more, right? <laughs> because you, as soon as you tell a kid not to do something, they want to do it. And um, so a couple of them end up going to the Cirque du Freak. And, you know, they're thinking it sort of is one of those more kind of old fashioned, you know, kind of freak show things. And it kind of is, but kind of isn't. Because maybe one of the people at this, uh, at this show is, Empire, do do do, and so the story goes from there. We figure out what's going on. Gets so things get a little sinister, and um, this was a heck of a lot of fun. It really was. This is a like a young adult, you know, ish story, and um, yeah, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I would definitely, you know, when I'm in the mood for it, I'll continue on with the series. I think to kind of see where it goes because it definitely lived, you know, leaves off in a place where you're like, oh, okay, we definitely got some continuing stories. There's some drama that's going on, some tension that um, could definitely further on into, you know, the future stories. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm interested for sure. Um, what else did I have? Anything? Yeah, I didn't have any other notes on that, but let's see. I didn't quite finish the short story collections I was working on, but I'm just going to kind of keep working, you know, reading those the rest of the month. But I'm going to, um, like I said, wrap up this vlog here. So the Welcome to the Fun House stories. Um, I'm about halfway through that collection, really having a good time with those. And these are just all themed around, you know, carnivals and uh circuses and things like that it's just a lot of fun and I'm really almost done with actually the dead man humor uh, collection um you know the clown stories I really got like I think there's like three more stories on this and I'll be finished but overall really enjoying these collection about you know again it's answering the asking the question of what are clouds actually scared of and I'm really enjoying how the author has ever sort of interpreted that question um things have there have been some really dark things in here and um and yeah really just overall I have enjoyed this I'm pretty sure I'll end up enjoying the last you know a few stories that I need to finish off so pretty confident in saying that this one is definitely a hit um so yeah that 
that's the vlog. I read a lot of things. I had a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, I don't know. This was just fun. I, we love a theme, right? We love a theme. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to wrap up this vlog now. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know, um, you know, were some of your favorite circus or carnival books that are any I'm missing out on. Let me know. Uh, cause I'm definitely, this is definitely fun to dive into this, you know, this, uh, this world of carnivals and circuses and clowns. <laughs> and, um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. I hope you're doing well and I will catch you in the next one. Ooh.